Okay, welcome again to Daiko Reviews. Uh, today I'm going to do a little playthrough of uh, Metal Gear and Snake's Revenge. Uh, I'm filming this with a uh, Samsung Galaxy S2 uh, phone, uh, straight from my television. Um, I uh, basically mounted it on a camera stand with some uh, rubber bands to keep it in place. Uh, I hope this works better than what I did last time with those uh, light gun game reviews where I used a webcam. Uh, also to prevent the reflection of my table I covered it with two black t-shirts so that should hopefully work now. Um, well, First off I'm uh, showing you Metal Gear. Just going to do a short playthrough. Uh, as you might know that Metal Gear is originally an MSX game. Uh, it was ported to the Famicom or to the NES. And uh, the NES port is uh, kind of different than the uh, original MSX version. Uh, as you see we're starting off here in the jungle and Big Boss is calling us. So we're choosing Transceiver. Uh, as you probably no big boss is actually your enemy. Um, the American uh, people uh, at Konami didn't really take their uh, games too seriously and they called big boss uh, Furman Gaddafi. Uh, they were basically mocking uh, Gaddafi. And with Snake's Revenge they did something similar with Komani. Oops, well that was a bit of useless information. And this is the, uh, well, an enemy basically. And we just have to wait for him to get to sleep. So he's sleeping and now we can take him out. You see, that was easy. Here's a bunch of dogs. We simply uh, avoid them. That's all you can do. Well, you can kill them, but it's too much of a hassle. This one we can simply surprise. Uh, there's quite a few differences with the uh, MSX version. Uh, the MSX version, for instance, doesn't have this jungle thing. Also, uh, important is that this that the translation is uh, rather terrible. Oops, I should have been a little more patient I guess. Uh, what you basically do is you just wait in a safe spot and you strike when the uh, enemy is not watching you. Just make sure you're not in their line of sight. And then you should be fine. Oops, now I should run for it. So, oh, oh shit. Oh, he killed me. Well, let's continue first. As you can see, uh, when you start out in the game, you only have one rank. Uh, if you proceed in the game, when you're um, rescuing prisoners, you will be promoted with your rank. It means you can have more health and more ammunition. Uh, maybe I could show some uh, passwords later on. Let's see if I uh, still have the binoculars. Yes, so I don't have to go into the truck again. Oops! Oh man! 
You know what? I'm just gonna do a little password. These passwords you see here are basically generated by the game. Um, they store a lot of information, uh, like your health, your rank, your ammunition, uh, whether you've rescued certain prisoners, and uh, the information for rise. Uh, because of this you can actually uh, create your own passwords. So. We are going to enter one. Um, as you see here, this password screen uh, might be different in your version. Uh, the European version has different characters than the uh, American version. Um, that means that the passwords are not are not directly compatible unless you convert them. Uh, it's relatively easy. You simply convert the uh, letters and numbers from the same uh, position. Um, maybe I can show that someday, but it's quite easy to make your own conversion chart. I'm going to turn on the lights now and have a look at some passwords. Oh, I actually quite like this music by the way. Let's see. If we can find a nice password. Minus the C. Alright. And you see I have a rank of 4 and quite a bit of health. Um, and it's quite easily possible to generate your own passwords if you follow um, some documentation you can find on the internet, uh, like gamefacts.com for instance. You just have to google for it. So we're in some kind of mystery location now. Let's see. Oh, it looks like we're in the second jungle or somewhere at the tank, I believe. Oh, another vehicle. Well, let's just go inside. Hey, we found some food. That's nice. Uh, to basically navigate between the different uh, fortresses, and you're using the jungle. The jungle is kind of like a uh, well, some sort of central hub between these locations, and it's mainly those trucks that transport you from building to building. Let's go inside. I don't really remember which uh, card I need to use. It's just a bit of uh, trying. Yeah, card four. Now oh, this looks like building one, if I'm not mistaken. Let's go back. 
let's see what kind of weapons I have. Oh, a machine gun. That'll work. So that's a lot better. Also, depending on your rank, you can have more ammunition. That's basically how you should uh, do this. Uh, basically sneak through the uh, fortresses without being noticed. Well, there's a bit of candid camera. It's always a bit hard to navigate. Let's see if we can find something interesting in this room. No. Well, I've got a machine gun now, so I can just shoot him. Oh boy. Ah, blast! Go away! Oh, this is a place where you end up if you were uh, somewhere earlier in the game where you have to get captured to proceed. And this is the uh, spot where you end up at this truck. Just forget it. We're just. Let's see if we can go somewhere else. If I'm not mistaken, there should be a, uh, a pit between those crates, but it's possible to. Um, stop it from growing bigger by pressing the select button. Now you have to remember the size of this uh, black square of those uh, pitfalls. Uh, now, you can nef now you can basically walk around it, uh, but you can still be killed if you uh, for forgot the size, because when I press select again the uh, pitfall disappears. Kill the enemies first. You see, I can safely walk around it. And I died because I was probably touching the edge of the pitfall. So that was uh, a bit of Metal Gear. Now let's take a look at Snake's Revenge. Snake's Revenge is the uh, unofficial sequel, it's uh, considered to be a non-canical sequel of the series. Um, it's kind of a black sheep in the Metal Gear series, uh, because it's considered to be a somewhat inferior game. At least in comparison to the original MSX game and the uh, sequel on the MSX. Um, at first I uh, thought this was the only other uh, Metal Gear game out there, but that but it was in 1995 or something, when I, before the internet, when I didn't know any better. And I just uh, rented this game at some point, and it was my first uh, uh, experience of the whole Metal Gear concept. What is this? It's basically just a modernized, or upgraded uh, version of Metal Gear. That's what they basically had in mind. Um, the creators of this game, 
uh, created it completely independently without uh, Kojima's involvement. Well, there we are, uh, starting off with the helicopter in the jungle. And right from the get-go you see that this game uh, has a very fresh and uh, colorful appearance. Graphically it's a lot nicer than the original. Um, also the interface has been improved, the, the, the weapon and equipment selection. You see it's all, especially the transceiver is a uh, lot nicer now. It's also easier to use. But anyway, the creators of this game uh, uh, actually uh, met Kojima on a train ride and he said, well, we are working on this uh, Metal Gear sequel and uh, it's only for the Western market and only for the Famicom. And uh, I like the original MSX game and I want you to make a proper sequel. And that's how uh, Metal Gear 2 Solid Snake came about, so if it wasn't for this game, the uh, successors would have probably never existed. <laughs> so that's kind of funny. <laughs> Even though this is not the best game in the series. Also the whole stealth aspect uh, doesn't really work that well in this game. They made this uh, much more action oriented. I guess the developers had some idea with this. Oh, let's answer the call. Snake, I have bad news for you. You went to the enemy's airspace. We can't help you anymore. See you at meeting point after the military operation is over. Good luck. Oh well, that's helpful. <laughs> Not. <laughs> so we are proceeding, and here's a bunch of searchlights, and you have to avoid them. Because if you uh, do not avoid them, you get uh, detected. I must say the music in this game is pretty decent. I think it's some uh, pretty good old school NES stuff. Also this game is um, much more level oriented rather than just being one large world like the original. Okay we found some food and uh, I can take a few more. Uh, the amount you can take depends on uh, your ranking of course. It's just like in the original game. So I uh, should have like, oh yes, three food items. Oopsie! Oh. So we're getting away. Just like in the original, patience is really key. Did you know that some of the people who made this game also worked on Castlevania 3 and on Mission Impossible? Especially the musician. Oh, let's take some food. Should be another prison or somewhere. And some ammunition that we need to locate. Yeah, that's prisoner number two. Thanks 
Actually, it helps. So let's get out. Ah, that's the back door of the first building. Uh, we can't get in there yet because we don't have a key card. And there's a very special way to get inside. And that's where you need to use the transceiver for. Oh no, not again. Ah, ammunition! Oh, let's see. Are you okay? Hide at the main gate to receive information. Um, this guy apparently is a traitor. He's going to uh, betray you. He's sort of double-crossing and... But you need him to get inside the building. So, let's see if I can take a little more ammo. Yes, 50 is the max. Oh no! Oh shit. Let's uh, fight him here. No, just watch. Just walk up here. Answer the call. Select transceiver. Lieutenant, I arrived at point A. Let's put the plan into effect. Good luck infiltrating the enemy base. Now we wait and the other guy gets captured. I'll take you! Go ahead. And they leave the door open for me, how convenient, so I can go inside. So the first thing we need to do is uh, find keycard 1 and the silencer, because if I fire a shot here I get detected. And I don't want that. So, key card. Sometimes the enemies drop items. Oops, I wanted to surprise him. Unfortunately, I failed at this. <laughs> Ouch. So, where can we find the silencer? Well, in the jungle. That's why we need to go to the back door. We can't open that door yet, because that requires card 2, if I remember correctly. And there is our silencer. Now be patient. Bam. Oh, it's so much more convenient to shoot. <laughs> hey, not a prisoner. And he's telling that there is a truth gas available, and if you use that on other prisoners, they will. Uh, Tell you the truth because some of them are liars, apparently. Okay, that's all fine. Mm. I 
believe I need to go here first. In this game it's often better to just run. Ah, that worked well. Go in the door. Hey, key card too. Thank you. Let's see what's behind this door. Uh, hey, we got promoted a rank so we can have more ammunition and more health and more stuff. Running often works better. Ouch. Let's take some food. can find if we can actually go in here. Yes, the door opens. Hey, there's a truth cause. Let's see how much I can take. Getting very low on ammunition. Uh, card one. If you kill enemies without uh, being detected, they will often drop items like ammunition or food. But you have to take them out by punching, kind of like this. And if you're lucky, they'll drop an item. But they don't always do that. And that's a bit unfortunate. Well, I just run for it. Let's go into the elevator. Now we get rid of them. Watching that in that direction. Okay, now the, we. I want to surprise the other one. Sorry, I was interrupted a little bit by uh, my dad opening the door. 
Oh, damn. I'm out of ammo. Let's take some food. Desperately need ammunition. Hey, a machine gun! Nice! That is if I had ammunition for it. Oh boy. I think I'm not going to win this. Oh. Hey, some plastic explosives. We're going to need those later in the swimming section. If I can actually make it there. Because I'm very low on uh, everything. Please drop me an item. Ah, oh, the bastard. End of the mission. Mission failed. No, let's show you the uh, password screen. Just like in the original game, the passwords are pretty complex. Lots of, lots of different characters, lots of variation. Basically, every character means something. Uh, unlike the original uh, MSX. Uh, I'm sorry, uh, NES Metal Gear game, there is no uh, guide uh, explaining every position of the password, so uh, at least I haven't found anyone yet. So uh, you can't reverse engineer the passwords. So uh, that was Snake's Revenge in uh, Metal Gear, and that uh, concludes the video. I hope you enjoyed it. and. Uh, I'll uh, see you guys next time.